Now we'll go into assembling the TIG torch. First thing we do is we have a collet body suited to the size tungsten that we have. We have a collet which again matches the size tungsten that we're going to use and that goes into there and that then goes through into there. We have a nozzle which we can get from our uh, nozzle selection. I've selected a number five for this case. We then put our TIG torch together. We put the tungsten and that through there and make sure that our collet body is nice and tight. Just give it a tweak. We make our tungsten out too long and then we put our back cap on. At this stage, not tightening it right up. We put our nozzle on. making sure we give it an extra tweak. We then adjust our stick out on DC about eight to 10 mil, and we tighten our back cap up, and the TIG torch should be good to go. The next we're going to do is connect our TIG torch to the DC welder. Now when we're connecting to a DC welder, we have a negative and a positive. The TIG torch always goes into the negative slot. So put it in there and we give it a, a nice tweak. We then connect our gas hose. And we just give that a tighten. We then put in our control lead, and that goes into the plug, making sure that it goes in the correct way. Give it a push, and then tighten it up. We then connect our earth, then on a TIG torch, it should always, to a TIG machine, should always connect into the positive side. So connect that into the positive side and give it a tweak. Make sure that we connect the earth to the job securely and we're ready to set the welder up. The controls for the DC Strata Easy TIG 205 DC is as follows. We've now set it on the arc mode. I push that button, it goes into DC HF start. I push it again, it goes into DC lift arc. So I'm going to put it into DC HF start. The second one down here is that we have special pulse, which we can set up. We can go into full pulse mode or we can turn the pulse off, which is what I've got at the moment. Next we're going to talk about the function lights. These are the little lights that come up on the screen. We scroll through them by pushing this button here. The first one is pre-gas. This one allows the gas to come through before we pull the trigger and the arc ignites, so we can have a good gas start and it will start cleanly. In 2T, we will miss out the start current light, we go straight up to ramp up. Ramp up, I'm going to set at a half a second. The next one I work on is peak current. This is the one you adjust up and down depending on the thickness of material that you're going to weld. The one after that is downslope. Now downslope is there to fill up the little pinhole at the end of welding. Now I personally set the downslope at about 1.5 seconds. The last little light here is Post gas. Now post gas there is to protect the tungsten wires it cools down. Now the rule of thumb is one second per 10 amps, so I set it around about eight to nine seconds to cover all bases. Now I'm going to change it to the 4T function. Now I'm in 4T, I now bring in start current. That's our pre-gas. Now start current allows the puddle to stay at this amperage until you take your finger off the trigger. When you do that, it will then go to the ramp up. Our peak current, ramp down, and our finishing current. Our finishing current will be held when you hold the finger on the button, and when you release it, it will then go to the post gas. One of the other functions that the EasyTech 205 DC has is what we call lift art. 
HF not, not be so appropriate in some areas where it might interfere with electrical equipment. So the 205 has a lift arc function where we can now come down, touch the tungsten and lift it up without the HF and means that around some electrical equipment that makes this machine very safe to use. The next function we're going to talk about is pulse tick. The Strata Easy Tick 205 DC has a pulse function. Now the advantages of pulse function is that we can now put in some heat, let it cool down, put in some heat, let it cool down. This works really well when you're trying to work out of position or working on corners. How we put it into this mode is very easy. We put our finger on this button, push it twice, and we now go into our pulse function. With our pulse function, we need to set our peak amps, which I've in this case set it at 100 amps. Now, if I scroll it through, I'm now going to set my base current, which I've set at 40 amps. Now, a good rule of thumb is that you drop the peak currents down by 60%. In this case, 100 amps, and our base current being 40 amps. The next one we've got to tell it to is how much we have it at the peak and how much we have it at the base. In this case, I have set it at 50%. means that it is 50% at the peak and 50% at the base current. The next thing we need to tell the pulse is how often this needs to happen. So we push this button two more times and this one here tells me that I have set it at two times a second, which is a very good start for this type of machine. Now I'm going to set the EasyTag 205 into arc welding mode. It is a very good arc welder. It has an open circuit voltage of 62. Now to do this, we grab our mode button and I push it once, push it twice, and now I'm into arc welding mode. And I can adjust my amperage by this single knob here. Now first and foremost, we must put our electrodes in the right polarity that's the negative, that's the positive. Please don't guess. Go to your packet. At this um, rod I'm going to use is a 7018, and it tells me that it needs to go into the positive side. So I put my handpiece into the positive and make sure it's knocked in nice and tight. I then get my earth and put that into the negative. Please check the packet of electrodes to suit which way around they go, as it changes the performance of the electrode that you're going to use. I now put my electrode into the handpiece by loosening the top, putting the electrode in, and then tightening it back up, putting a little bend in it for my comfort. Now, in behind the scenes, we have two functions in the arc welding mode. First and foremost is arc start. Now, a good starting point, it goes from uh, 10 right up to 100. I like to set it around 30 as a good starting point. The next built-in behind function is arc force or the word dig. Now dig means that when I try to extinguish the arc it's going to reach out and grab me more energy to keep the arc going. So I like to set this one as a starting point of around about 40 and this should get the arc going and we're ready to weld. I'll go back and now I'm going to set my peak current which is my welding current and in this case, I've just looked at the packet and it tells me that I need to set it at 135 amps.